my girl friend called me. Look, I come Dubai. For my own now, there my my whole suffering starts already. As I said, you reject everything change. In the night, I'll dress up, go outside, go look for men. Come stay for prison for three months with only one cloth when I wear. It's an eye opener to the youths, you know, and to the young girls there. That all that glitters is not good out there. See, I the woman just come. See, my comment, my comment. You see, I said, don't buy a ticket on me. See, eh? Who buy a ticket on me? It was actually from the plane that I knew God was up to something. It takes God to speak to a man's heart to, to know some of the likely things that your wife had done and you still take her. Tell me a lot, say a lot. That's okay. Are you sure? Say yes. So don't cry again. Don't cry. Redemption. And with me in the studio is the producer of the documentary, Ekene Ezeji and Mrs. Ayo, uh, Ayo Deji Lawrence, who acted as seven, essentially introduced the story to the world. Now, welcome, Ekene and Ayo. Thank you very much. Good to have you both live in the studio. <laughs> Great Same work here. there, by yeah. the way, and thank you. You essentially uh, introduced, you acted as yourself and introduced this story uh, to the world. Tell us, how was this story introduced to you, first of all? Um, in 2017, I traveled to Kenya for a conference, and while coming back on the flight, I met with Rita. She happened to be deported from Dubai, um, used to be a, a commercial sex worker, and she was deported from Dubai. And she happened to sit on the same seat as I was assigned. Mm -hmm. So that was how I got in touch with her and that was how the whole thing started. Now tell me, uh, what discoveries did you make you know, while in this story and trying to help bring this story to the world? Um, the things I noticed, first of all, was the fact that um, there are times that people find themselves doing things that they didn't really want to do. And when they, are, when they have opportunity to be helped, they're willing to be helped. And they, they're willing to change and make a better move, take a better, a new, a better step as regards living. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, uh, Ekene is a producer, and Ekene, yeah. you're here. It's good to also have you. Now, at what point did you meet with Ekene, Ekene. and the chemistry that led to bringing this uh, documentary forth? It, it's amazing how it all started. Um, in 2018, the ministry that coordinates the Prayer Hannah's ministry, we had our AGM. And part of the things we had in mind again 2019 was to have a documentary on her. So in January, Ekene happened to be in my daughter's school. Her own daughter was moving from her former school to my daughter's school. And the, the two of them happened to be chosen um, as scholars. So they were supposed to take an examination and we were there as well, you know, just to encourage them. Mm -hmm. So we happened to sit on the same table. At that point, my husband wasn't on seat. He had to go and get something at home. And we're told to just interact with the person on our table. And that was how we got talking. And I shared the story with her and she was like, wow, I'm a producer. I can do this. And that was how the whole thing started. started yes. And again, what did you find attractive, most attractive in this project? Um, I guess it's the vulnerability, the willingness of Rita, particularly, mm -hmm. um, to be vulnerable uh, and tell her story. Because at some point she breaks down crying, and she she's just you know you're so overwhelmed. I, you know I had to even run, hug her from behind the scenes because you felt that this was a story she was living, mm -hmm. a real life event that was unfolding. She she was still getting her life back together, but she was overwhelmed by the the way her life had taken a turn for the better. Mm -hmm. So it was just it was just so true to the experience she was having and being able to witness it was, was over, even for me, it felt slightly overwhelming to say, mm -hmm. this is someone who has really been in this situation and is able to tell the other side of the story. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Okay, so as in, I know that in doing projects like this, it never pans out, you know, exactly the way uh, that you want it to pan out. And uh, so I want to ask, in what way also has this project touched, touched you personally as, yeah. as, you know, trying to be away from the story as a human being, as an individual? How has this project, this story touched you? Oh, wow, you can't fail to be touched by this story. Um, one of the things that stood out for me was there's so many, there quite a few people whose lives um, interfaced with Rita's story. Um, so, for example, you start off with Ayo, you mm -hmm. know, the fact that she was willing to do her little, she even admitted that she knew she couldn't go the whole distance, but the much she could do, like her five loaves and two fishes, she, she did it. And then it was almost like a relay race. She then was able to tag somebody else who happened to be the right person at the right time, and he did his bit, and then mm -hmm. he tagged somebody else. And so you had like a series of people in the documentary who said, look, they, they weren't even sure initially what they were getting into, but they just said, well, 
maybe based on yeah, the recommendation of Ayo because mm -hmm. they trusted Ayo then the other person said the wife trusted him and let the Ayo uh, let Rita into the home and, and so and on and then the women in the praying hands ministry also brought money together so it was just was a partnership and you realize that sometimes we look at a challenge and we say we don't want to get involved mm -hmm. because we think if we get involved we count the costs but it's not it's not based on what you can do you're not meant to take the whole tab just do the bits just you hard. can. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're buying time for that person, for the next person and the next person. Mm -hmm. You know, Rita, at some point in the documentary, says, do such people exist in the world? Oh. She couldn't believe that such kindness could mm -hmm. come her way mm -hmm. via human beings. You know, it was, it was quite a story. I mean, it's a good thing that you've said that because if you didn't start, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. wouldn't have heard this powerful story. Yeah. Now, uh, Ayo, I'll come back to you now. In telling, the, in telling the story and getting involved in this project, I'm sure you had some expectations. So I want to find out where your expectations met. I'll say... What were those expectations and were they met? Okay, yes. The first expectation was actually to get the story out there and to get people to, you know, to know that um, some people are going through particular issues and they, are, they can still find help. Mm -hmm. That's my first expectation. I'm so glad that was met. I'll say that it was met and... Um, exceeded. Mm, wow. It was met and exceeded. I'm, I'm sure that's a good thing for you to hear. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes that, it was yeah. met and exceeded because everything we longed for, mm -hmm. everything we looked forward to, we actually get, got at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And you know, Rita is doing well, her business is thriving. I'm really, really, really so glad. Okay. I'm really so glad. I was going to ask you, what more would you, you know, want in terms of multiplier effects of having told this story? Uh, yes. I'm sure there would be more. Yes. Um, one of the things that we really desire to have in the ministry that I coordinate is actually the halfway houses. And I've said that yes. over and over to Emekede, mm -hmm. such that people like that can be taken in, rehabilitated, and settled back in the community. So for us in the Pray Hannah's ministry world, really want a situation wherein we'll have um, sponsors, we have grants, to be able to have halfway houses all over mm -hmm. beyond Nigeria, because I know there are so many people who would respond if they find help, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? So for us, that's, that's, that will be amazing if in the next five years we are able to have like two halfway houses yeah. housing these ladies mm -hmm. or even men because we have men uh, uh, male um, commercial sex workers as well yeah. yes we do yeah. yes we do yes. so we, we would be so glad yeah, can I that's know. another story unfolding wow. for you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say just yes, in addition please, to the multiplier effect question that a lot of times, even she said her expectations have been exceeded. Mm -hmm. But you don't even know. You know that's the, that's the beauty of social media and the media at large. You don't actually know whose lives you're touching. Mm -hmm. So a lot right. of times, it's like you're just scattering seed, mm -hmm. and then maybe subsequently, you know, I'm looking forward to, to hearing to testimonies down the line of people whose lives were touched mm -hmm. as far out as I don't know Russia or mm -hmm. wherever. Just um, by that single don't, story. Don't yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just by that single story. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just want to say that you remember you can still catch that documentary on our YouTube page, which is at Plus TV Africa. Uh, thank you. Oh yes, and also Before it's going to be showing at 1.30 on Saturday and Sunday okay. as well. Awesome. So there's going to be a repeat of it. For mm. those who may not have seen it, there's going to be a repeat of it uh, on our uh, YouTube channel. And it is Redemption Story. Yes, yes. Redemption at 1.30. Alright, I want to say thank you, Ayodeji Lawrence, and of course our very own Ekene uh, Ezeji, <laughs> for this powerful story uh, that you have brought to the world and exposing and bringing to the fore the vulnerability of some young girls. And you have also mentioned that there are some young men Hopefully, yes, well. will take on the challenge <laughs> and uh, bring that. <laughs> All right, uh, so it's time to go on a brief break. And when we return, the Plus News on the Hour continues with a breakdown of lots more topical stories making the headlines. Please stay with us. My girlfriend called me. If I come to Dubai for my own now then my, my whole suffering starts already. I said, you reject everything change. In the night, I'll dress up, go outside, go look for men. Come stay for prison for three months with only one cloth when I wear. It's an eye-opener to the youths, you know, and to the young girls there, that all that glitters is not good out there. See, I do my just call. See, my comments, my comments. You see, I said, don't buy a ticket for me. See, eh? Who oh, buy a ticket for me? It was actually from the plane that I knew God was up to something. It takes God to speak to a man's heart to, to know some of the likely things that your wife had done and you still take her. Let me alone, say Lord. That's 
okay. Are you sure? Say yes. Say don't cry again. Don't cry. Redemption.